Hello, I'm Liz Lumley of Finextra, and today I'm speaking to Penny Hembro of CGI, and we're going to be talking about banking. So, you know, to start off, what are, what are some of the sort of market trends that you're seeing affecting the banking industry right at the moment? Well, there's some really seismic changes going on in banking. Uh, some of, of the result of the financial crisis, so 2008, 2009, and, and the economic uh, situation that arose from that. But also, I think some of the seismic changes which uh, are really only starting to flow through is this new generation of both of consumers in the retail banking space, but also people working in the corporates who are the clients in the wholesale space of banking. And, and that's changing because we're getting what's called the new generation of Generation Y and Generation X coming in not only to have the wealth as private individuals, but also having managerial positions in corporates. And they're bringing with them a completely different view of business, how to do business, and of course, are highly digital. Um, on the, the result of the economic crisis and the banking crisis, obviously what's happened is this raft of new regulations coming into the industry. And so all of the banks are having to change the way that they operate, the way they manage themselves, the way they segregate their activities as a result of regulation. But what it's also done is it's increased the cost of capital, which has decreased the profitability of banking. And that means that a lot of the banks are looking at how do they make money with their client base, so their client franchise, and in what products and in what geographies. And so you're seeing quite a retrenchment from the once global strategies that a lot of the banks had to one that is very intimate with their clients in geographies and products. You, you mentioned a little bit about the new generation of banking customers and sort of the, the digital experience. Yeah. Is, that, is that sort of, is there having a bleed over from the, the, the digital customers and the retail side? Is that bleeding over to some of the requirements on the wholesale side from corporate clients as well? Well, it is because this new generation of people coming into the workforce as well as being you know, consumers of retail banking have the same expectations that they have of their re retail shops and online shopping experiences, so their retail experiences. They expect the same in their business life. They expect to be able to go onto their iPad or their smartphone and be able to go get the app to do something. And once they're in the app, to be able to cross products, to compare, to search, to transact, to look at past transactions, pending transactions. And so if you're a corporate treasurer, for example, you now expect to be able to see not just one product, but all your products that you're dealing with, all your transactions with a bank. The same if you're a retail consumer, you want to be able to go into your bank What's my balance? What are my assets as well? What's my lending position? What could I borrow if I wanted to? And you want oh. it all mobile. <laughs> and you want it all mobile. And at some point you want it on your iPad. Sometimes you want it on your smartphone. And sometimes you, you want it on your laptop. And very occasionally you might actually go into the branch. <laughs> Someone. Yeah. So what are, I mean, how are banks responding to all these trends from a, a business perspective then? Well, I think, I think one of the biggest things that we're, we're seeing is this retrenchment into profitable products and geographies. And that's happening in, in both the wholesale and the retail uh, side of banking. So wholesale being both the transaction banking as well as the more uh, investment banking side. So, um, you know, in, in, the, in the retail market, then we've seen as, as risk of banks become more, more risk averse, Obviously, there's been quite a curtailment of lending into the retail sector as well as the uh, small to medium-sized enterprise market. So they have been retrenching into areas of their consumer base or their product base where they feel they can, they can consume less capital and make more money. So that's, that's one of the big implications for a business. They're rescaling. Uh, the, the other side is that with the regulations, they're having to re look at their business models and also in terms of responding to new to, to this sort of digital consumer, be they corporates or, or individuals, they're having to look at their business models because they need to 
look at cross products, so the internal structures of, and processes that were once very product aligned, and now they're trying to think about how do these become consumer aligned. And at the same time, having this, all this interaction, because when people are digital, they interact much more than they did if they saw somebody or went into a bank branch. Mm -hmm. Then you're collecting that data. And so the banks are also saying, we're getting this data in. We want to use it to deepen our relationship with our, our customers. We want to increase our wallet share. How do we actually extract that information so that we can use it in a dynamic way, real time, to gain more business. So then how do all these sort of changes and challenges and trends then really affect the IT inside of a bank? I think, I think one of the, the biggest areas is from an IT perspective there is a continued uh, a preponderance of large regulatory change programs in IT. So banks are dealing with many many new regulations and they, they need to change their systems and increase their data usage in order to be able to implement and be compliant. So there is a substantial proportion of the change budgets uh, spent on that. What, what we're starting to see is that because now CIOs realise that this, isn't, this is going to be a constant way of life, that regulations and the use of uh, risk data and the reporting side is going to require constant change mm. is they're looking to see how they can combine these projects or programs and leverage concepts like co uh, a consistent data architecture and reporting engines so much much more of a what would be a SOA so a SOA way of looking at all of their regulatory change some banks, for example, find that for every single regulation they have to touch 400 systems, for example. That cannot continue that way. They need to think about how they can do it more efficiently. Now, that's one, that's one side. The other side is really about how do they build out their digital capability um, and how do they build, use the data that they get about their consumers. Most banks nowadays, retail or wholesale, have got corporate or client portals and uh, expose some kind of services uh, to, th to their clients. The there is, however, across the market a level of dissatisfaction with the services that people are, are getting if you look from the outside in rather than the inside out. And the real problem is, well, how do you, how do you really leverage that into the life of your consumer? How do you get the data? And so, from an IT perspective, you think about how do you furnish that intelligence through to, the, through to the marketeers or the product specialists or to the client. How do you enable your client to interact with you? It's also impacting the way that you expose your business services. And so there's a significant trend to, to move into so architectures and simplify banking technology to move to platforms that can process highly efficient, efficiently straight through processing uh, that you can expose through to the, the customer. And in fact, new services are coming up as well. So uh, in order to improve the profitability, they're thinking about, well, do I now need to do pricing and billing on a component, not just on a risk and a product level? So it's starting to bring to the forefront some of the new business services that you need to expose into your uh, channels. Mm. Seems like for the IT department, it's a constant juggling act between complying with regulations and dealing with the risk reporting and also providing new products and dealing with client data and client demands. I mean, it, it, is it tough to balance all of those requirements? I think it's um, a, a fantastic question because I think it's, uh, it's, it's almost an impossible challenge to, to balance because for the majority of CIOs today, they actually have less budget than they did yesterday. And so because with the rescaling of the business, they're having to rescale their run rate of technology. And so the other aspect is that they're looking to uh, use uh, companies like CGI to uh, help them to uh, master industrialized IT management, to move it into that pref running IT as a business so that you can run it highly efficiently to agreed KPIs at a much lower 
run rate. Excellent. Penny, thank you very much. Thank you.